guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be my labor and delivery story time for baby number two so my last video I think was like 34 to 36 week update my pregnancy vlog so surprise surprise I had my baby um, he came at 38 weeks so I was never able to film any more videos I had so many other ones planned I wanted to do a what's in my hospital bag and you know like more updates and I never got around to it so here I am now postpartum and my baby is actually already a month old so this is definitely going up like a little later than I wanted to I'm just gonna get right into it because I like to ramble on so like I said he did come a little bit early he came at 38 weeks and three days and it's so funny because the whole time my whole pregnancy I just kept saying I had a feeling he was gonna come a little earlier and I had my first at 40 weeks and three days I think so she was a little bit late and I just had a feeling he was gonna come early because I always heard that like the second pregnancy is a lot smoother and sometimes it's a lot faster so I just had that stuck in my mind that he was gonna come soon and he's actually in his swing right now I don't know if you guys can hear like the little swing noise and he's making his little noises so I might have to grab him right now but if I do you know he'll be in the story it was about 8 p.m. that day that the night before January 4th and I started having small contractions and I did already know what they felt like since I already had my first so I started timing them on this app I had and it was about 15 to 20 minutes apart um, give or take so they were definitely a lot more spaced out and I know that people have said to go to the hospital when it's about five minutes apart five to seven minutes I've heard very different times so I'm not sure but I knew that I didn't want to go to the hospital and be stuck there for a long time or have them send me back so that was just something I had in mind I really wanted to wait until the very last moment and as I get into the story you guys will see that that's definitely what happened spoiler alert so it was 8 p.m. and I figured I'm just gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna sleep it off and maybe my contractions will be a lot closer in the morning. So the morning rolled around and I definitely had a hard time sleeping. I was tossing and turning in pain. Of course, as you can imagine, having contractions. So they were really steady though. I had contractions all night. They didn't really go away. They were just still spaced out really, really far. The next morning, January 5th, um, they were still pretty far apart, but they were about 10 minutes apart now, so 10, and then it would be like 8 minutes, and then sometimes it would be like 6 minutes, and I'm just like, whoa, it's getting a little close, but I still wanted to be a little more prepared, so I went to the market to get my daughter some snacks, and I got back, I took a shower, I did my makeup, it was already well into the afternoon, and... It was so funny because everyone was just waiting around for me. They're like, okay, we're ready whenever you are. Whenever you want to go to the hospital, I'm ready to take you. Let's go. And I'm just like, no, I want to wait. I want to wait until I know for sure that it's just getting closer. I don't want to go in there and be stuck there for hours. And I was in so much pain by this time. So it was about 3 p.m. that day. And I figured I would take a nap because my daughter usually takes her nap around the afternoon. So I decided to take a nap with her. And I was in so much pain by this time. I was laying in bed. I was timing them. They were already five minutes. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to have to go to the hospital soon because this is getting really painful. So on my way to the hospital, we finally left at about 3.30, I want to say. And I was in so much pain in the car. I was just like oh my gosh, like help me, like I'm gonna have this baby right now. I felt so much pressure already down there and the funny thing is with my first pregnancy, I had the epidural. I don't know if I had some kind of weird side effect with the epidural, but I was so, so numb that I couldn't even feel when I was pushing. So I did not know what it felt like you know when you're crowning or when the baby's actually coming out I could not feel anything the first time around it was a whole different experience for me and I felt every second of the pain I felt everything and so in the car the hospital's about 30 minutes away from my house so I knew that I needed to get there soon because they were already like I was having some that were two minutes apart three minutes apart and then like at one point it would be one minute apart we were really like in a time crunch trying to get there as fast as possible we finally get to the hospital at around four o'clock and you know you get into the hospital and they started asking you all these questions and I'm just like I'm in pain I don't want to answer your questions and of course since I had him a little bit early I didn't have my papers like I didn't register into the hospital yet so they wanted me to register they were giving me paperwork and I was just like I can't do this 
this right now? How do you expect me to do this when I'm in this much pain? And so they put me in the hospital bed. It's kind of like the waiting room, so it wasn't the actual room yet. They were just examining me to make sure I was actually going into labor. So they checked me and they said I was five centimeters dilated. And with my daughter, I was six centimeters by the time I went to the hospital. So I was just so mad at that point. I was like, how am I only five centimeters? I, I am in so much more pain than the last time I came in. And it just felt so much stronger. And they were like, no, well, we're going to admit you. You're definitely going into labor. I think it was about 20 minutes later, the doctor finally came into the waiting room bed. And she was talking to me, just asking me more questions. And I just couldn't even answer her questions at that point. I had to take, like little breaks in between when she was asking me stuff and she was telling me to breathe and just I told her I'm in so much pain I feel like I'm about to have this baby so she was like you know what let me just check you again and mind you this was only 20 minutes after they had just first checked me and the doctor looked at me and she was like wow you're nine centimeters we're about to have this baby and I was like you know what? I knew it. I knew it this whole time. You guys are asking me these questions. You're expecting me to answer you. And I'm like crowning over here practically. So they start pushing me down the hall to the actual room, which was about a few doors down. And on my way into the room, I start telling them, you know what? I need to push. I need to push. I feel him. Like I feel so much pressure. It was so intense. And they were like, no, don't push, you need to wait, you need to wait until we get to the room so we can transfer you to the other bed. And I kept screaming, I was so loud, like, <laughs> I don't even know. In the moment, I did not care. I was screaming at these doctors and these nurses and I was like, no, like, I need to push. So we finally get to the room, they're getting ready to transfer me to the bed. All the nurses are running in at this point because nobody was prepared. Nobody had, like, their gear on, which I didn't understand, I thought that they would always have somebody prepared at all times. I don't know the whole procedure with that, but I definitely came in at the last minute so they weren't prepared. The doctor was not prepared. She was barely getting like her gloves and everything on. Like I said, everybody was rushing in the room and I just start pushing and they're telling me, stop, don't push, you need to get into the bed first. And I just was screaming. I could not take it, so I was just pushing. Okay, I'm gonna push him out. This is gonna happen really quickly. So literally, I think two pushes and he was already out. I just hear crying and I'm over there practically crying my eyes out because I was in so much pain. I didn't have the epidural. I had just walked in the hospital and I think not even an hour later, he was already out. So craziest, fastest experience. I didn't think the story was gonna be that long because it was such a fast process, like I said. And I've always heard that your second baby comes a lot faster than your first, and that was, I wouldn't really say, I don't know if that was the case, because like I said, I did start having contractions the night before, so I guess I was kind of in labor for a while, but I was just kind of managing my labor at home. And I did not know that I had such a high pain tolerance because, Wow, without the epidural, it was, it was an amazing experience. I honestly think it was so much better. The recovery process was just so much easier. I didn't tear this time. I did have a tear the first time. I don't remember if it was second degree. I think it might have been a second degree tear. This time around, I didn't have any tears. It wasn't anything dramatic. I didn't have to have any stitches. So I just feel like it was so much easier, faster. Of course you do feel everything, you feel all the pain. And I just thought that was such an amazing experience though to actually feel my baby coming out. I felt the second his head popped out, I just felt it and I felt like an instant drop in my stomach. Like, you know, your stomach's so hard for such a long time and then you instantly just feel relief and it was just such a crazy, crazy experience and I'm... I don't know, I feel like both of my labors were interesting. Couldn't have asked for a more amazing experience and I feel like I've been really blessed both of these times and I'm so grateful. Um, I know that it can go completely different. I know a lot of people, everybody has different experiences and so this was just my experience. It was so funny after because all of the nurses just kept telling me, you know what, for your third baby, you better come in way sooner because you don't want this to happen again and I'm just like, <laughs> No, I don't even know if I'm gonna have a third baby, first of all. I thought it was so much better like that, personally. Like, maybe next time I'll have a at-home labor. Mm -hmm. 
No, I'm totally kidding. I don't know if I'm gonna have a third baby. I do have my pair now. I have my boy and my girl, so I think I'm okay. It's just such a crazy thing. I finally have my son here, and so he was born at six pounds, six ounces, and Charlotte was actually born at six pounds, seven ounces, so they were just so close. And he was born two weeks earlier, so maybe he would have been a little bigger if he would have stayed in a little longer. I don't know. I hear him making more noises, so hopefully I can grab him right now so I can show you guys my little boy. Yeah. You want to be in the video too? <laughs> sit right here, sit right here. So you guys, this is Benjamin. He doesn't have a middle name because his name's already kind of long. So we just decided to go with Benjamin and we have Charlotte right here, as you can see. Charlotte, say hi. Are you a big sister now? Yeah, you love your baby brother. So this little guy is already a month old. What are you doing with my camera? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So this little guy is already five weeks old and he is 10 pounds. He is growing so, so fast, a lot faster than Charlotte was. She was wearing newborn clothes for such a long time and he's already in three months, so it's crazy. He's so big. <laughs> I don't know if it's a part of having a boy or what. Okay guys, so that is all for this video. As you can see, I have two of them right here with me. So this is a lot. <laughs> um, but we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Hi. Say bye. Hi. Benjamin, say. Hi. Oh, he's about to throw up. Hi.